ladies and gents, ladies and gents, just checking my levels. Uh, evening, ladies and gents, my name is Simon Brown doing this evening's presentation. Uh, I suppose, first off, welcome to 2016. Welcome, Simon. It's been a strange year so far. We'll get to that in a second. So this is now the seventh in a series. Before we delve into, into this evening's boot camp session, though, I'll just quickly show of hands uh, who was in the market as a trader or an investor in 2008. Okay, that's more than I thought. So it's about five, it's maybe 10%. Um, and, and I'll throw myself into that equation. So for the rest of you, you think that markets always go up. Um, you've never experienced a, a bear market. And look, 2008 was special, hey? So 2008 was the worst market we had since the 1920s. Uh, so everybody here, worst in our lifetime. Hopefully it remains the worst in our lifetime. 2000 was kids play. No, in 08 we were down 50%. The only other time we've gone down 50%, hey? <laughs> well, 2016 is early days. A couple of points. People are telling you this smells like 2008. Most of them are never burnt around in 08. It doesn't. 2008 was different for a bunch of reasons. Bear, every bear market <coughs> or market crash is different for different reasons. The key point is that if you weren't around in 2008, and if this is a bear market we're going into, it looks like it, but who knows, is bear markets are very different to bull markets, fundamentally different. Um, and the key thing is, is that you've spent all those years doing it one way, and now you've got to start thinking the other way. And the key difference, more than anything, well, obviously, you're making money on the downside. The key point is markets fall faster and they are more volatile when they're going down. The key thing that happens with, 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 with the, the, the down markets is that they fall at a hell of a speed, but they bounce. They are insanely volatile. So if you've been short recently in the last couple of days, that's been the right place to be, right? You were short, you were making money on the downside. And then boom, today we're up 1,000 points. Anglo's up 10%, Capitex up 7 Poor little Lonman can't catch a bird. Lonman's flat. <laughs> but, but the point being is, is, is that it's tough to trade it. A, a bear market, a down market is tough. Because A, we wired for upside. We wired for optimism. It's who we are. It's a cognitive bias. It's a critically important cognitive bias. But also, it's been our experience of the last seven or eight years of trading or investing. So we wired for upside. And then that crazy volatility. So... Either be prepared for it, perhaps reduce position size, get a little more careful with your risk, or do what I do with most of my systems. I just don't trade the downside. Market's going to go crazy. That's fine. You know what? A bear market lasts 6, 12, 18 months at most. For example, my lazy system, it will just go to cash. And the point is that in 6, 12, or 18 months, I will still have my money and the market will be 10 or 20% lower. So I've done, I haven't made money, but I've kind of matched it. But there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, this downside trading in theory is wonderful, but in practice is difficult and can destroy portfolios. And ergo, I'm going to step out of the equation. I'm going to say thanks, but no thanks. That, that's something you've got to decide for yourself. Certainly be careful in bear markets. Be careful in down markets. Are we bears or not? Time will tell. But just be careful in down markets. Quick last stat. <clears throat> so market will see a 5% uh, correction at least once or twice a year on average. It sees a 10% correction about every three years. It sees a 20% a, a correction about every five years. It sees a 10% correction about every 10, sorry, 30% correction about every 10 years or so. It sees a plus 40% correction twice in the history of stock markets. 1929, 2008. Now, like all good stats, that could be, you know, we could be coming again. But point is, these things happen. Things go down. It's just how it is. Long-term portfolio, which is not what we're talking about this evening, forget about the market. Stop looking. As long as you own quality, if you own dodgy stuff, like a mining share or... or, or <laughs> I know, and you're going to tell me about your gold miners. If you own a gold miner and you bought it in the last 12 months, congratulations. If you bought it longer ago than that, you're still underwater. Um, Thing being is that your long-term investment portfolio, this is a blip. Ignore it. A year or two in a lifetime of investing is neither here nor there. So the previous sessions, those are what we've done. The videos are all online. Um, 
started off with the getting started in trading, moving through the process. This is series number, sorry, session seven in the series. We continue through to June, and then in July we kick off with a new series, which we uh, pretty much worked out what we're going to do with it and the like. So we'll continue doing these on a monthly basis. The videos are all online. Go to justonelap.com. You can find those videos. You can view them. They're all about an hour long. It's these sessions recorded um, in the point there. So as always, we kick off with a, with, with a quote from Mark Manson. I, I love him. He sends out emails. I think the email is called Wait But Why. And you just, he'll find like a random topic you think you have no interest in. And then he will send you a 10,000 word email that you will rivetively read the entire, po the entire email. His point here is that forget about goals, focus on habits. And this, this, this presentation is New Year's trading resolutions. And I'm going to tell you, forget New Year's trading resolutions. Focus on trading habits, on good habits. And the reason is quite simple. I mean, I don't know. How many of us made New Year's resolutions this year? And more importantly, how many have still stuck to them? Kudos to the man in the front. I've got clever. I'm now getting old. You know, I'm now depending. I'm probably approaching midlife. Uh, I don't make New Year's resolutions anymore because you know what? After 45 New Year's Eves, I've worked out. I don't actually keep any of them, not once in all those years. So I don't bother with it. Why don't we bother with? Why don't we succeed at New Year's resolutions? Because they're real. Because they're things we want to do. <coughs> we want to drink less, which is ironic because usually we face down in the gutter <coughs> when we say that. <coughs> we want to lose weight, which is ironic because we've just spent the last week stuffing our face over Christmas. Um, you know, we want to get fit, which is ironic because we don't even drive past the gym. We detour so we don't have to see it. The problem is we have these big, big goals. I want to quit smoking and stuff like that. Uh, we have these giant size goals and in truth, they're insurmountable. Get fit. And what does get fit mean? It's not comprehensible. It, it, it's too, yes, so what does get fit? Are we getting fit to the level of Serena Williams or are we getting fit to the level of a friend of mine who can run around the block four times? Which is pretty impressive because I can't even walk around the block four times. I've got a car, why do I need to run? <laughs> so why, you know, what are we trying to do there? And the problem is quite simple. All goal setting, resolutions, all of these things, what do they tell you? Big picture, get the big picture and march towards it and there is no evidence that that succeeds. In fact, the evidence is quite simply that it does not work. And what's my evidence? All of us. Now, I mean, okay, some of us are fitter than others, some of us are slimmer than others, some of us drink less than others, but we all know these secrets, right? We know how to get fit, run around the block every morning. You know, we know how to drink less, just don't open that second bottle of wine. We know these processes. Why don't we do them? We don't do them because they're large, they're intimidating, they scare us, and in truth, at some point, we abandon them. Now, when you get to my age, abandoning a New Year's resolution is easy. When you, I remember in my 20s, it used to pain me to abandon a New Year's resolution. Not so much that I didn't do it. Usually, once the hangover had worn off, I would decide to move on. What we need to do is forget the big picture, small picture. Focus on small pictures. Smoke, focus on step by step by step, and then we start to create habits. So small things, you know, I, I, one of the things I need to do is smoke less, and this is not a news resolution, this is just how it is. So what do I do? Well, I stop smoking in my bedroom and my office. Okay, so now we have meetings in my lounge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deadly serious. Um, but a trick, I only got one ashtray in the house. A further trick, I never keep my cigarettes with me. I don't know how many of you are smokers, but a lot of it is unconscious. So now my cigarettes are never next to me. Now I want a cigarette. I've got to like, ah, oh, where are they? Ah, oh, get up and walk, get some exercise, and get to them. You know, with, 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 with uh, 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 getting fit. It's not about getting fit. It's saying, well, okay, we've we got to get fit. How do we create habits around getting fit? You know, what do we want to do? How are we going to create those little bits of habits? So I'm going to stop talking about our personal lives, and I'm going to focus this onto the trading space. And the short version is, how can we make 2016 our best trading year ever? Regardless whether markets go up or down, whether we are crashing or bear markets, or whether we go roaring up to 60,000 points. How can we make this our best year ever? And then, of course, having made 2016 our best year ever, I'll be back here in January next year, and I'll say to you, so how do we make 2017 our best year ever? 
This is not a mountain where one day we get to the top and say, boom, done it. Improvement is something we are constantly, always, always, always doing as human beings. That fortunately is a cognitive bias which works in our favor. So making goals work. As I said, those big goals simply don't help us. It's focusing, it's process. It's focusing on the process, the journey, the small steps, the small victories. It's about celebrating small victories. And celebrating doesn't need to be wild parties. It can just be, you know, I don't know, pat yourself in the back or, or have a light lager or something as the case may be. But ultimately creating those things that form habits. One of the biases, one of the abilities we have as human beings is an ability to form a habit. We are very much creatures of habit. We like to think we're footloose and fancy free and that we do crazy stuff. But all of us drive the same route to work every day. You know, it's why I hate ways. Because Waze wants to take me down roads that I've been driving past for eight years. It's like, no, I don't go down that road. Why not? Oh, I don't. We're creatures of habit. Unfortunately, we get into the wrong habits. What we've got to start doing is, in essence, brainwashing ourselves and start getting into those right habits. And start identifying what's not working, putting structures in place, for want of a bad phrase, that help us in a sense that will, that, that will help us uh, 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 reinforce the habits and th that will help us make those habits easier for us. And the average <coughs> habit for a human being takes about 60 days. Some habits a little bit longer, some a little bit uh, shorter. But if you want to start doing something, if, if you want to start running, when you get to day 61, you're probably now a runner. Look, I mean, I don't recommend running. I mean, when the zombies come, they can bite me first. <laughs> but it's about, it's about two months. And if you start and you, you graduate to it, but it's about making those habits. So one of the best ways to, let's take the running habit, is a friend who bangs on your door every morning. <laughs> Boom, come running with me. Not messages you, eh? Not WhatsApps you, because you can pretend your internet's dead and you didn't get the WhatsApp message. But he physically comes banging on your door and says, come, let's go. Um, and and, and, and you know, because then you reinforce each other and you take it in turns to be the one to wake up. So your habit is not go to gym. Your habit is go wake up Sondele. Go bang on their door and take them to go to gym with them. Make that the habit in that sense. So what we need to do are these small steps, these small processes. And in the trading space, it comes back to the perfect trade. Many of you have heard me talk about it. I'm going to talk about it again. But before we get there, First point is reflection, looking back at the previous year. Something which we're not very good at. We're not very good at for two reasons. One is because our memories are fairly useless, just as a species. Um, we, we look back at things and we, we, we don't remember reality. We think it is, but we, we kind of remember what we want to. Um, and sometimes we remember what we're forced to by circumstances. But we, we, we color it. We, 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 we tint it to, to, to work towards us. Um, and, and we don't look back because it's time consuming and sometimes it's painful. And because we've got to look at things sometimes and say, I messed up. Right? No one had, that, that, that's never a fun thing. I mean, there, there's no upside to having to say that you were the fool. But you need to go back to your trading of last year. And it's not just what did you do wrong. It's what works. What did you do right? What are you, as a trader, when someone says to you, what's your best attribute as a trader? Your brain immediately goes, boom, it's that. For me, it's simple. I know exactly what my best attribute as a trader is. I am brilliant at executing a stop loss. And in truth, no, in, in the trading world, that's about all I'm good at. Fortunately, it's the only thing that matters in the trading world. But I have, we're now in 2016, so for 16 years, Every single time a stop loss of mine has triggered, every time for 16 years, I've exited every single time. And sometimes the stop loss was at 10 and the stock has gone to 8. What did I do? I took the stop loss every single time. Because I care a lot more about protecting my capital than I do about growing it. Because if my capital disappears, you can't grow zero. But I know what my key attribute, I know what I do well. So that it doesn't mean I don't review it. I go back and I look at my trades and I make sure that I did action my stop losses, that I did do it properly, that I did do it every single time. Right time, right place, right level, etc., etc. But what are you doing well? 
And then we focus on that too. I've told the story before. Tiger Woods, who used to be a great golfer. He, he did a chip in one of the, I know nothing about golf, but one of the major tournaments in the US, the PGA or something like that, he's on the rough and he chips his ball in and it goes whoop and goes into the hole. And the whole world goes wild and he gets a, a birdie or a something. Anyway, so anyway, and after the tournament, one of the journalists is leaving and he sees Tiger Woods at the, at the, at the practice screen. And what's Tiger Woods doing? He's got a hundred balls in front of him and he's doing that same shot, pitching out of the rough into the hole. And the journalist says to Tiger, but why are you practicing that shot? You do it brilliant. Tiger says, how do you think I got brilliant? You get brilliant at something by repetition. <coughs> the more you do it, the more you do anything, the better you get at it, the easier it becomes. Stop losses for me 16 years ago were not easy. They were immensely painful things. I still remember having an argument with my wife where, oddly enough, she, who knows nothing about trading, was telling me to do the stop loss. And I'm like, don't be silly. So I did it to spite her. Die daughter, 64 rand and 80 cents. Die daughter never traded at that level ever again. I have never mentioned that conversation to her again. <laughs> but it didn't start easy. It started hard. I didn't like them. Because I was losing money. A stop loss meant I was losing money. So what I did was I hacked my brain. What I said when I enter a trade, say I'm putting in 10,000 rand, and if I get stopped, I get back nine, so I'm losing 1,000. To my brain, I said, the cost of this trade is 1,000 rand. I pay 1,000 rand to enter the trade. And if I get stopped at nine, that's my 1,000 rand already paid. So in other words, the loss was going out of my head at the entrance to the trade. What do we typically do when we enter a trade? We think about the billions we're going to make. Billions, eh? With bees. No millions here. We've got ambition. <laughs> things to do, things to buy. We think about the billions we're going to make. Instead, focus on the thousand rand you're going to lose. So I'm going to lose th this, this trade. It's going to cost me a thousand rand. And then maybe you only lose 500 and you're actually like, whoa! And you, yeah. So that's how I hacked my brain. And now I just execute them. I got stopped out of a trade uh, Friday before last. One of my lazy trades, I was in the Indy 25. Um, and it was just, I just, my phone goes beep beep and it says lazy trade and I go to my computer and I check the level and I check the index and it's below and I click, 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 boom, done, couple of minutes. I'm not even aware that I'm doing it. But it didn't happen overnight. It's been a process. So what did you do right? What did you do wrong? The first question is how do you know this? Do you know this because you go to your trading journal? Because you all have trading journals. Trading is a business, and if you don't have documents and procedures and etc., then your business is going to go bust. And I know, admin, paperwork, no fun, no fun whatsoever, but you've got to do it. When I was day trading the Aussie, the market would finish, would close at 5.30. I would sometimes work until 7, 7.30, maybe even 8 o'clock, just doing, my, doing all the admin for the day. And I couldn't leave it for the weekend because then it would take me all weekend. And I hated it. But it has to be done. You want to know, record every single trade. And these days you can do it simple. You're in Excel or, or a Word doc or, or whatever, the, whatever you want. I mean, there, there's a million ways to do them these days that are nice and simple. And a trading journal is, you know, to mine is just, so I've got different systems. Every system has a name. So it's, you know, which was the system I was trading? What was the trigger I got? What was my entry and my exit? Uh, did I make a profit or a loss? In truth, more importantly, I score my trades. Perfect trade. I'll get to that in a moment. How I felt through the trade. Because if trading is causing you stress, there is no good. And if trading is causing you elation, there is no good. If you're having fun trading, probably losing money. No, I mean, emotions are not going to help your trading. Now, it's easy. So the old school of thinking as heralded by, by, by uh, uh, Mark Douglas. Uh, some seats there and up in the front here. Um, was the idea of try to banish emotions. And I, I went through that school and, and, and came out the other end in one piece. The, the, the idea these days is to, is to manage your emotions. Whatever the case may be, is that if emotions are in trading, we're going to be a, a, a crazy before you know it. 
because we're going to have the boom great days where we're going to be you know dancing on the ceiling and then we're going to have the boom bad days when we're just so depressed we can't even get to bed never mind get out of bed and neither of those make life good nor improve your trading so how you're feeling helps you understand what your stresses are the stresses that are most popular are stresses about being wrong and that's a fallacy because we using profit or loss to measure that wrong and stress is about losing money and that's a fallacy because with good money management we're going to lose money sometimes that's just what trading there's no one who's never had well yeah there's a guy who used to message me all the time and, and tell me how he'd never had a losing trade they were one of two things right either he's never traded or he's a liar <laughs> the day I asked him which it was I never heard from him again and what can you do better? The important thing in the trading journal is ask the question, what could you do better? But don't rush off and after every trade, change it. You need a process, you need a plan. These you come back to, so I review every year. My, my, I use my, my, my end of year holiday, and part of that process in the end of the year holiday is to review my portfolios, to review my trading, to review all of that sort of thing. And what I do is I go back to those, what could I have done better? And then I collate them all together and say, well, which of these is practical to actually, actually start implementing into my trading? Do I want to make changes? And I am very reticent to make a change in my trading. And, and, and in th that, for me, is easy to say because I've got two decades of experience. If you're newer, you're probably doing a lot more. But it's also a case of don't change everything. You know, it's like a Formula One car, right? They send... Vettel out to do some practice laps and he comes back and he's got a list of seven things he thinks need changing. They change one. They send him out again. Because if they change all seven, he's going to come back with a list of 21 things that need changing. So he comes back with seven things that need to tweak. They fix one. They send him out again. They change one at a time. One thing at a time. Very, very slowly. And that's what we've got to be doing in our trading. Unless your trading is a complete and unremitting disaster. And, and I'm, that's not a diss, eh? First five years of my trading. Man, I lost money. I got the T-shirt. I lost the T-shirt. <laughs> I destroyed three portfolios. That's just how trading starts. But we've got to be reflective. So we've got to keep this journal. And then we've got to come and use that trading journal and see what we did right, what we did wrong. What are the areas we can improve in? Maybe you've been trading uh, uh, cable, uh, dollar sterling. And you discover at the end of the year that, man, you know what? You trade dollar euro, excellent. But cable, you trade terrible. Well, maybe don't trade cable. Maybe just bin it completely. You know, maybe you, you, so maybe it's what you're trading. Your, your, maybe your, your uh, uh, profit targets are too aggressive. That sort of thing. What are the, the little tweaks that you can do? And I especially like throwing away systems. So I've galvanized all my trading down into two trading systems, basically a, a momentum and a lazy. And over the years, I've had dozens of others that I've simplified and thrown by the wayside. Um, I trade predominantly indices. And we speak about this in the products in, in, in that first video. Which you can, I don't want to spend too much time on that. It's available. But it's about distilling it down, having that journal, going through <coughs> it, deciding what, you, what, 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 what you're good at, um, and tracking your returns. important point with the returns is that when you're starting you're probably losing money and that's just because that's how we start you know the first time Tiger Woods hit a golf ball it probably went shwing, completely the wrong way what we need to be tracking our returns for is that ultimately if we're only just beating the market by one or two points every year but we're spending 30 hours a month doing it, we could say to ourselves, you know what, we could buy an ETF and then we could go and have 30 hours to go and run around the block or do something else. We need to track our returns. Best way to do that is to unitize. I'm, again, I'll, uh, quickly, the unitize is essentially turn your portfolio into a unit trust. So as you, the unit price changes, so the value of the units change as the portfolio moves, dividends received coming in, costs going out. And the quantity of units change. If you add cash, units go up. If you remove cash, units go down. 
There's videos on just one lap. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. There's a 15-minute video on this which you can go through and, 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 and work out that process. The point being is that the market's going to beat us some years. That's just going to happen. It's that if it always beats us, then we're in trouble. So part of that process is, how did we actually do? And what you might find is that certain trading systems work better than others. For example, last year, we, we went sideways. And not even with a big trading range. It's not like we went up 20% and then down 20% and we could trade it. We just went, I mean, our market was up 4.6% calendar year. And it just ground sideways. That's an immensely difficult market to trade. And unless, you, unless you're a swing trader, I, I want to say most traders, and I, I'm talking to my bias, because when I say most traders, I mean certainly I am a trend-based trader. I need a trend. Sideways is not a trend. So in a sideways market, I expect to lose money. If I come out ahead in the sideways market, I'm like, you know, breathe a sigh of relief. If you're trading breakouts and those things, different kettle of fish entirely. If you're trading individual stocks, but so if you are an index trend trader and you trade Aussie futures and last year you didn't do very well, well, it quite, it's just a, a very good chance. It's just a factor of the market. That doesn't mean that you mustn't go and see if there are other factors involved. But there's every chance that it's just, you know what, you're in the market, weren't happy last year. I need trends. Give me a trend, then I'm a happy man. No trend, then I'm not a happy man. The key things, where did you give money back, where did you make money? Those are almost in a sense are the two cornerstones of trading. We make money, we lose money. Those are two absolute givens in the trading world. Our aim as a trader is to make more than we lose and we come out ahead. But look at where we made the money. Which systems was it? Which products? How were we doing it? What were we doing it with? And look at where we were constantly losing money. Again, it might be a, you know, maybe you're trading FX and FX is just not for you. Maybe you're trading eight times geared, but if you dropped your gearing to four, you would get a better, a better result from it. What you don't want to do, what you absolutely do not want to do, is go look at where you made <coughs> some money and, and, and realize that if you just tweaked that here and tweaked it there, suddenly you could make, in other words, don't retrofit an entire trading system to a relatively short period of time. If you're retrofitting a trading system to a one-year period, you know, you're going to be trading for decades. One year is absolutely nothing. Uh, Gents, some down here and one in the corner over there. You need to, you need, you need to be, your, your trading system needs to be broad enough to capture a lot. To capture a lot. Yeah, and, and I've done it. I, I've gone through that process of deciding that the magic moving average was 27.2 and 46.9 because over the previous six weeks I would have made money using those two moving averages and of course over the next six weeks who knows what's happening we can't perfectly back we, we can perfectly backfit it the point is that's not desirable it's not going to work it's not going to make it a, 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 a successful process by any stretch of the imagination but is there places that we're constantly doing well in? Are there certain systems that just do really well? Are there certain products we're trading incredibly well? Are there certain uh, uh, time frames that are working better than for us? And if there are, drill into those and, 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 and see the whys. Are there certain, the flip side, where we're taking pain, time frames, products, etc.? And ultimately, I mean, what, what do we really want from our trading? We want a couple of very robust systems that make money most years, the majority of years, that actually, in truth, take a small bit of time. We don't want to be spending 12 hours a day staring at computer screens. We may as well get a job. What we want is something where we can be spent. You know, my, one of my goals this year is that my trading would take me no more than 30 minutes a week. 30 minutes a week. And by my calculation, my trading last year was taking me about 45 minutes a week. And those extra 15 minutes are, no. I wanted, there was a time when my trading was taking me 12 hours a day. 
So we want to make that, those systems robust. We want to distill it down to a couple of systems, to a couple of points. You want a few robust trading systems. If, if people say, what do you trade in? Oh, anything that moves. There's a great glib answer, and it sounds fun on a, on a, on a you know, Saturday evening with your friends. But you want to, you know, people say to you, what do I trade? Really, really simple. I trade indices, I trade uh, uh, trends, and I trade momentum stocks, which are basically, again, trends. Uh, that's 10 words to describe what I trade. And, and again, I'm a stress. This, has, this was not an overnight process. This took me a very, it probably, probably took me about a decade. I, I got two excuses. Um, I'm a slow learner. I'm from KZN. But more than that, <laughs> that when I started in the mid-90s, there was no internet. Eh? So like you wanted to learn something, you had to go to a library. Young kids are, what's a library? It's like Google, but it's like, you've you got to physically. <laughs> Time frames. I mean, these are the things to look at. And again, don't attack all of them and say, I'm going to improve on all of them. I mean, ideally, yes, we want to improve on all of these. If we, if, if we think they're all weaknesses, we want to improve on all of them. But what we need to do is pick those one or two. And the one or two that are obviously most important is stop loss and risk management. But let's start at the top, time frame. What time frame are you trading in? So most people start off trading in, in short time frames. A couple of minutes, maybe a 15 minute, maybe a 60 minute chart. In other words, you're starting where the pros are, right? And yet we end up. So I look at people like uh, Eagle, Aussie Trader on, 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 on Twitter. Um, he's trading four-hour FX charts. People are like, four-hour FX charts? He's like, yeah. I mean, he's done the five-minute stuff. He's migrated. I trade daily or weekly charts. Most of my trading happens in a weekly chart now. So we start the short time frames because we think that's where it's all going to be and we want the thrill of it and we want the rush of it. But ultimately, most people, and, and there are exceptions, but unless we want to, if you're trading a 15-minute chart, you've now got yourself a new job. And if you have an existing job, now you have two jobs. And they're probably both paying poorly at this point. So look at your time frames. Look at what you're trading. <coughs> you're trading CFDs, you're trading options, are you trading futures, are you trading the, the ungeared product? Look at what your underlying asset is. Remember, we've talked about it before. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Your most risky is shares, then indices, then FX. The risk on FX is not FX. It's the 100 times gearing. That hurts us in FX. You trade FX and two or three times gearing. It's a beautiful thing because currencies hardly move. Our RAND notwithstanding. <laughs> but even our RAND. So what did our RAND do in those four days in December? We moved 13%, which is a giant move for the RAND. What did Anglo do today? 13%, which for Anglo is currently like standard move. So shares your most... Then, equi uh, then, then, then uh, 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 shares, indices, FX. It's the gearing that we put on top that makes it hurt. I'll come to noise in a second. Your stop loss process, your risk management, how much are you trading per trade? Less is always better. Don't be in a hurry. You're not going to be rich by the end of the year unless you marry money. <laughs> no, and it's January, so you've got 11 months to find and marry that person. Um, your style of trading, breakout, swing, <coughs> momentum, whatever it might be. As I said, don't attack all of them. If you think your issue might be in time frame, then focus on time frame, make some changes there, step back, see how it goes. Noise is most critical. One of the, I mean, two beautiful things happened in my life today. I had no internet which meant I had to use my phone to access the internet, which means I don't use too much because I don't own MTN shares anymore, so I don't like using too much data because I'm making other people rich. Um, and then Twitter went down. And for the first 10 or 15 minutes of Twitter going down, I must say, I was a little jumpy. And then I was like, hang on, this is pretty cool. Twitter's down. That, that was that quiet stuff. This, this thing I'm hearing or not hearing is called quiet. There's too much noise out there. There's a, an ideal out there, and, and I'll touch on it now. I'm going to come back to it in a moment, and I, I alluded it to a moment ago. What's your habit about going to gym every day? Don't go to gym every day. Make your habit going to your neighbor and banging on their door. 
a gym buddy. You want a trading buddy. Twitter is not your trading buddy. Chat rooms are not your trading buddy. Uh, TV is not your trading buddy because they are noise. They're throwing things at you. And if anything, what they're going to do is make you make a mistake. I mean, can anyone, I mean, are there, are there examples that we can find? Because I can't think of any that where we can say, ah, oh, yes, the noise of Twitter or the noise of TV saved my trade. Usually we do silly things. We use it for affirmation. We want to buy something, so we go out there and we try and find someone who agrees with us. Folks, this is the internet. There are a billion people out there who agree with you. And that does not make you right. I've told this story before. When I was in school in, the, in KZN in the 80s, way before the internet, um, there was a geography teacher in Peter Maritzburg who was president of the Flat Earth Society. Mm. They used to have quarterly meetings, which were not very well attended, less people than we have here this evening. Why were they not well attended? Two reasons. One, Peter Maritzburg, lovely town, but kind of sleepy. Two, the earth isn't flat. That same person now has a Facebook group. Last time I checked, 500,000 likes. The world has not become flatter since the 1980s. <laughs> the internet's just a crazy place. We've got to have that courage of our convictions. We've got to stop asking other people. Other people have their own view, their own bias. You can both be right or both be wrong, particularly if you're in different time frames. You know, someone asked me the other day if I, if I thought uh, uh, it was Discovery. Oh, should, you know, is Discovery a good buy? I'm like, yeah, it's a great buy. <laughs> Two days later, he's like, well, I'm down 4%. I'm like, dude, this is the best stock on the JSC. Turns out he's trading a geared position. I'm talking about holding it until 2050. <laughs> Twitter, 140 characters. Hey, no space for nuance. Twitter is a blunt tool. What, what you want from a trading buddy is someone, so an ideal world for a trading buddy. Someone who has full access to your trading account, login and everything, and someone who... Ideally once a day, but maybe a couple of times a week, maybe even just once a week if you're prepared to stretch it. We'll log on to your account and make sure that you do what you say you do. In other words, if you say you do breakouts on a 22-bar rule, they go and make sure that you trade breakouts on a 22-bar rule. Not sometimes you trade a breakout on a 19-bar rule, or sometimes you trade it on a 24-bar rule, or sometimes you don't trade it. They make sure that you do it on the 19 bar rule, on the, on, the, on, on the rule that you set it up. And they check you. And if you don't, they phone you up and say, hey, what happened here? And then you've got to either start lying to yourself or lying to your trading buddy. So someone who keeps you on your toes, someone who keeps you on the straight and narrow. Someone who, when you hear the noise, you get hold of them and say, hey, I've heard about it. And they'll say, hang on, what's the plan? And they'll always, in a sense, be pulling you down to reality. So it's a hard person to find. Many times it's not your best friend. Because when you phone your best friend all excited about an idea, they're going to be excited too. And you're going to go tearing off that cliff together. So you've got to find someone who, who can work with you. And it's not easy. And, and it, 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 but it, when you get that right person, they keep you on that straight and narrow. Whenever you're unsure, you just phone them. Whenever you're like, I'm supposed to buy this. But, but they make you do it. What, for me, my trading buddy, in a sense, is, is all of you. Because I trade in public. So I tweet my trades. And it's got to the point now. And it helps that I've got a bunch of followers and the like. But it's got to the point now where people tweet me and say, hey, you're going to get stopped out in the next 24 minutes, aren't you? And I, I'm not even on Twitter, but it means if I'm not stopped out in 24 minutes and they don't see the trade go through the market, they're going to tweet me four minutes later and say, hey, dude, what happened? And then I look like a, a, a fool. At, at, at best, I look like a fool. So by that process, that's what keeps, uh, that now forces me into that, into that narrow. So you need to find those, that, that, that person who can keep you in the narrow. And chat forums are a terrible place. They're mob mentality. Just, just everyone agreeing with everyone. And, and they can get really bad where someone raises their hand and says, actually, I don't think this is a bear market. And they just get pummeled into submission. 
And it happens, I mean, I've been on chat forums since the mid-90s. It's happened on pretty much every chat forum I've seen. Eventually, at some point, it just de de degenerates into, into abject noise. Pick a spot, improve on it. Don't expect it to be overnight. Look for ways where you can hack it. Don't just say, I want to be better at stop loss. Say, how are you going to get, how are you going to make that better? So what are you going to do about stop loss? So what you could do is, is put a hard stop loss into the system. In other words, when your stop loss gets triggered, you are kicked out. doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing. That forces your hand. Get a trading buddy to do it for you. Put your trades out in public in, in, a, in an environment which is safe. And have those people check you that way. But saying, I'm going to get better. This year, I'm going to execute stop losses. Well, if you didn't last year, why are you going to do it this year? So put things in space. That will make that happen. And Pavlov's bill. There's nothing wrong with rewarding ourselves. So I know a guy who, who he's a, a, a whiskey. There's no word for it. He's a whiskey snob. Um, no, he drinks whiskey and he can pick up 16 different tastes. I'm like, yeah, this is whiskey. Um, so he buys expensive whiskey, like crazy expensive whiskey. And his reward is that is when he, when he and I'd, I'd, for example, he would do it on stop loss. I forget, I think his, his issue was entries, but he'd let's say stop loss or entry, whatever. He wasn't executing, he wasn't, he was you know, dilly-dallying and uh, missing the trades and stuff like that. So what he does, he buys the whiskey. And he says, cool, I can have some every time I do a perfect entry. So he didn't drink whiskey for a couple of months. <laughs> but slowly he got to that point. And, then he, and of course the other secret was is he then gave his wife the, whiskey, the key to the whiskey cabinet. So he couldn't cheat. So he had to go to his wife and say, I did a perfect trade. Now he couldn't, his wife knows nothing about trading. She didn't even want to look. But it's a brave man who looks their wife in the eye and says, and lies to her in order to get a, in order to get a drink. That's a very brave man. At the end of the day, the cornerstone of trading is discipline. I come back to this all the time. The trick is discipline to what? And I, I've said it before. You need a plan for your trading. And if you've got a plan, you're halfway home. Is it a good plan or a bad plan? Oh, look, you want a good plan. But ultimately, if you haven't got a plan, a bad plan is better than no plan. Because at least, if, you'll think I'm crazy. If you have a bad plan and you execute it perfectly, at some point you'll stop and review it and you'll be able to see the problems with the bad plan and you'll be able to fix it and make it a good plan. So even a bad plan is better than no plan. And, and that's the problem with most of us, with any goals that we have, is we don't have a plan. Our plan is to get fit. That's not a plan. The plan to get fit is we'll find someone to drag you to gym every morning at 5 o'clock, particularly in winter in Josie. That's a plan. So you need that plan. And then we say, well, what plan? And, 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 and the answer is quite simple. This is the market. Anything you want. So what do we do? We complicate it because we believe that complexity equals success. Complexity seldom equals success. You know, think of Uber. There's nothing, oh, look, there's some funky code in Uber, but Uber is not complicated. Taxis have been around since, the, since forever. All Uber did was, you know, had a button and one arrives at your door. They're not complicated. Simplicity is the secret. Unconscious competence. I'm not going to go down that road. We've discussed it in a previous video. But what we need to do is have something to be disciplined to. Because if I say be disciplined and you're shooting all over the place and you have no plan, no strategy, where's your discipline to what? And trading systems are dime a dozen. Um, go to just one lap. There are trading systems there from myself from uh, Warren Peacock, from uh, Alvain Berger. And, and the secret to all of those 
It's twofold. Firstly, they're simple. Secondly, they make money. They're not going to make you rich by Christmas. I promise you that. But we, you need a plan. You need some sort of plan. You need a trading strategy. You can do a 721 crossover. Complexity is not about it. It's about having that plan. So we need that system, the capital, the knowledge, the risk management, the goals. Knowledge, we're working on. The truth is we never get to the top of the mountain and say we know it all. As soon as that happens, we're going to get smacked. I learned something breathtaking last week. And it was so breathtaking, I've forgotten it. <laughs> the point is, is that there's, you know, no one can ever say I know it all. There's always more learning to do, more learning to happen. Um, we need that system. What is going to make us buy? What is going to make us sell? And critically, what is going to make us sit on our hands? In the trading market, you can be long, making money on the upside, short, making money on the downside, and sit on your hands is a position. It is absolutely a position. My lazy system, currently, 100% cash. And it's been going in and out of 100% cash since about August of last year. And, and when it goes into the market, it, it goes 75% cash. I and mean, this is a lazy system. So it's, you know, we haven't been in the resi for years. We haven't been in the mid cap for about a year. And we haven't been in the finny for about six months. We need capital to trade with. And so the olden days, I would have told you, you need a big pile of capital. And these days, the truth of the matter is, it depends what you're trading. If you're trading a mini Aussie contract um, and your, your margin requirement is a couple of hundred rand, you can get away with a couple of thousand rand for trading. What you need to be able to do with your, with your trading portfolio is you need to be able to take three, four, five positions. If you've got five grand and you put it all in one trade, even with a stop loss, if you have a string of losing trades, you're game over. So again, it's about the size that you trade. And the reason we trade too big is quite simple. We're in a hurry. Of course we're in a hurry. We've got habits, plans for the weekend. And you say, so hang on, step back, slow down. Let's, be, you know, let, let's learn this skill. Trading is an amazing thing. When we finally master it, I take that back. We never master it. When we finally get to the point where our trading is profitable more often than not, we have an invaluable skill that we can execute anywhere in the world where there is internet. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. We've talked about goals. We've touched on risk, 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 risk management. We're actually going to do an entire session on risk management because it's critically important. But we need to set these up, we need to decide what they are, and then we need to absolutely stick to them. This is my perfect trade. Many of you, and I recognize the faces in various presentations I do, in one of the earlier boot camps with IG, I talked about the perfect trade. There are a couple of points from it. Every time I do a trade, part of my journal is that I mark my trade. And I mark it out of seven. And I check myself on those seven points, and my aim is quite simple. I want to score seven out of seven. My goal in life is to do 104 perfect trades. I've currently done 103 in a row. So you note my goal is actually just plus one. When I started this process, my goal in life was to do one perfect trade. And then it became two and three. And because I don't trade very frequently, it's taken me four years, a little under four years, to get to 104. What is on that list is not massively important. Change it, add it, subtract to it. You might think seven is too many. You might think it's too few. I wouldn't make more. I would, there's some, even some duplicates I could do there. But to me, it's important I don't change. I've been using that list for the entire journey so far. And to me, a successful trade is that I get seven out of seven. Not <clears throat> that I make money. Because you have no control over making money. You can do everything right, but the market doesn't give you money this trade. It goes against you for whatever reason. If you've been long of Lonman today, everything about that trade was right, except you didn't make money. 
That's the point of trading. We are raised as human beings to believe that if we do everything right, we will get the reward. What we've got to do in trading is hack it because we think the reward is cash. But it's not. So this becomes the reward. This becomes our hit. This is what we focus on. Because the profit and loss is random. The profit and loss will come. We've got to look at what we can control. The profit or loss in individual trade, we can't control. Yes, we can limit the loss at stop loss. We can maximize the profit. But we can't force a losing trade to make us money. And you will have losing trades. Probably somewhere between 40 and 60% of your trades will lose you money. So the challenge is always the same. Go and do one perfect trade. Use that list, make your own. The only rule is simple. Nowhere is it allowed to say, did you make money? You do one perfect trade. And then if you're on Twitter, tweet me. If you're not, mail me, simon at justonelap.com and say to me, hey, Simon, I did a perfect trade. Here's what I will reply back to you. Congrats, awesome. I might even put a boom in there. And then I'll say to you, do one more. Just one more. This is just a journey of perfect trades, one after the other. And you're looking at that and you think it's the most boring thing in the world. Welcome to successful trading. And one day you look up and understand, hey, this, I, I'm the Hashim Amla of perfect trades. 104 does not impress me. 204 does not impress me. 311, now we're talking. And by my calculation, I'm going to be very old when I get to 311 perfect <laughs> trades. And when I mess up, I go back to zero. And this and the fact that I trade in public are the two things that keep me the most, that make me disciplined. I've never been as disciplined as I have been in my trading in the last three or four years. And it's quantifiably that, and in more recent time, well, in truth, you know, when you're on 12 perfect trades, uh, the, the power is less. When you're on 104 perfect trades, the power to do 105, the, 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 the sheer terror of messing it up, forces you into the, the discipline. So your challenge for 2016 is to just do one perfect trade. Having done it, a second, a third, and I'm serious about tweet me or, 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 or um, uh, 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 email me, whatever. Whatever. I, I want all the platforms. The reason for that is we need the affirmation. We need the, the, the boom, awesome, great, do another. And yes, we can do it to ourselves, but it's never quite the same. Much nicer when someone else does it. So it's about step by step. It's process. It's not going to happen today. It might not even happen this year. That's fine. It, it'll happen. At some point you'll look back and you'll think, whoa, hang on, I'm doing this. It's going to take us some time to get there. And it's going to be hard work to get there. Trading, when, you, when, you, when, 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 when you're trading well, trading is, is easy and, and, you know, but there's a lot of pain and suffering to get there, a lot of it, For, because it deals with two of the things which, which, which boggle us the most, money and emotion, which are almost the same. So it's going to be tough. Our confidence is going to take a bashing. That's to be expected. No one ever achieved anything in a straight line. And what's the skill we need to be a trader? We need to be alive. We don't need to be a genius. We don't need to be a mathematician. We, don't need, we just need to be alive. And then we need discipline. and bond. But the point is, everyone in this room has the core skill we need to trade well. And then write it down. The power of writing something down. Firstly, we tend to remember it better but also we then believe it. 
Harvard Business School want you to, add, to understand how come some people achieve their goals and some people don't achieve their goals. What differentiates that two group of people? So they took the class of 76 and they tracked them for a 30-year period. In 2008, they published the paper. You can go to hbr.org and buy it for $5. Here's the executive summary. In fact, no, here's the one, the one line that matters. So there were lots of things that mattered. But there was one key distinction. People who didn't write their goals down didn't achieve them. The act of writing it down didn't mean you did achieve it. But the absence of writing it down meant you were highly unlikely to. So once you've gone through a process and decided, I want to fix that and that, write them down. You can stick them on the wall. You can stick them in your wallet. You can stick them in the drawer. It doesn't matter what you do with it. And it can change. It's just written down. You can, if you want and you change your mind, tear that piece of paper up, throw it away, write a new one down. We can change them. But write it down. What are the one or two things that we're going to do in 2016 that is going to make this our best <coughs> trading year ever? I touched on support groups. And we need them as human beings. Absolutely, we do. And to a degree, this is, to a degree, the Twitters of the world are. Those are the two hashtags that follow our market, JSC and Aussie. You want to be careful about the noise. There's a lot of noise out there. We've got to say that other people have opinions, and that's fine. Uh, it, it, someone, someone tweeted me a little while ago, asked me if I'd sold my Calgary M3s. And I said, look, I'd sold some. I had some on the bid. Um, and he was all distraught because he had sold all of his. Yeah, and since that conversation four days ago, Calgary M3 is down 13%. Now, four days ago, it was quite simple. I thought I was right, and he thought I was right, and it turns out, no, he was right. We all have the same ability to see the future. Zero. <laughs> Careful of that noise. It's fun. It's engaging. But if it's, if it's informing your trading, get rid of it. If it's impeding your trading, get rid of it. So quick, because my time is bumping, plan, execute, review, improve, repeat. This is what you'll do for the rest of your trading life. Plan, execute, review, improve, repeat. Just go back and back. And I should make something that says something like an acronym, but I'm not very good with those. Plan what you're going to do. Execute it, your discipline. That plan enables the discipline. Review, because nothing's perfect. And if it is, what the heck, we still review it. See if we can improve it gently, tweak by tweak, not massive. This isn't, you know, even open heart surgery is like little cuts. Eh? It's not like <laughs> battle axe. And then repeat. Again and again and again. Forever. And that sounds daunting, but actually it's, it's quite, I quite like the comfort of it. Henry Moore it's about today, not about the year. It's about the small steps. It's not about I'm going to get fit this year. It's about I'm going to get Johnny to wake me up every morning at 5 o'clock. Every day. And if you do that, you will get fit this year. Or you'll move house. Uh, the homework, as always, and this is the same homework. The slide does not change because this is what we're going to look at. What are we trading? What assets, derivatives or not? Why are we trading them? Why are we trading uh, equities? Why are we trading Vodacom? Why aren't we? And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying ask the question. Why aren't we trading the question today? Why aren't we trading Bitcoin? Great question. Why not? I'm not saying do, but constantly interrogate. The what, the why, the hows, the time frames. Time frames will start short ultimately will end up wide. I will tell you to start with wide time frames. You will ignore me. There's a process we need to go through. That's not a diss on you. That's just how we are as human beings. Trust me, been there, done that, lost the t-shirt. We're back again in Feb 16th news flow, <coughs> which is frankly lots of noise, but there are ways we can trade news. We can actually make money off news flow. 
if we want to. I don't, but there certainly are. How to manage it, what to worry about, is there quality, is there not good quality, etc. cetera. Um, and then we're back March, April, May, June, and then we'll be back all the way through to June of next year, 2017. Videos all online. Ladies and gents, I'm going to park it there because I don't want to, uh, we've hit the time limit. I don't want to steal people's time. I appreciate places to go and things to do. That said, there's some snacks left. There's some clementines. There's tea and coffees. You're welcome to stick around a bit. You're welcome to throw some more questions. Uh, as I said, we are back on the 16th. Same place, same time, same way you book for here. Uh, and I start where I, f I finish where I start. I hope we make 2016 our best trading year ever. Not because 2015 was bad, but because we always want to be moving forward. The challenge to you, do a perfect trade, just one, and then two, and then three, but for now, just one. Thanks very much for your time this evening. <laughs>